Believe it or not, we are just ahead of summer, which means wedding season is almost here. The Knot is out with their 2023 global wedding report. And following the recent pandemic shutdowns and inflation here in the US, we are seeing a lot of changes in the wedding industry. And this is a topic that, of course, I know all too well. I'm planning my own wedding. So now we bring in the Knots executive editor, Lauren Kay. She joins us this morning to talk a little bit more about these trends. Lauren, good morning, and thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday. Oh, good morning. So happy to be here. Happy to have you. So we want to start out with one of, you know, the biggest questions right now, of course, amid inflation. How much does the average wedding cost in 2023 based on the amount of guests? And how is this affecting wedding budgets? And, and Lauren, I feel like the answer is going to surprise a lot of people. <laughs> Well, I hope I, I hope I don't surprise too many people, but yes, the average cost of a wedding in the U.S. is thirty thousand dollars. And you were absolutely right to mention guests. Guest count is the best way to either add money to your budget by having more guests or to make your budget work a little harder by having less guests. So we are finding that across the country, really, we're seeing a lot of couples get married. Our average guest count in the U.S. is 117 guests, but globally, it's much bigger. In India, they have an average of 285 guests, which is actually lower than pre-pandemic levels. So depending on where you are in the world, you may have a different guest size, but that is a really big contender on how far your budget can go. How interesting. And it really depends based on where you are. Um, yes. You know, we talk a lot about wedding trends and, uh, you know, I feel like I'm seeing a lot of like champagne towers, but I want to, you know, we want to get your take on it. What is are the newest, you know, and biggest trends for 2023 weddings right now? Sure. So last year was our Super Bowl of weddings. 2.6 million people got married, which was huge. This year, it's all about transformation. Weddings look different. And that's in part to the global pandemic and the way we had to shift and pivot. And it's also in part to couples. They are really prioritizing redefining traditions and the guest experience. So I love seeing this because it really is about the guests and about the couple themselves. So we are seeing everything from dancers, live performers. We've even seen tattoo bars. Everything is really indicative of the personalities of the couple getting married. One of my favorites is live painters. And this is a really cool idea because they actually paint either your ceremony or your reception live. And many will go around and sketch your guests during your reception, which means your guests get to go home with this beautiful favor that they will always remember your wedding day from. That's so, you know, I booked a live painter. I saw that on social media. I said that is one of the one things that I have to do. Yeah, it's so cool to see stuff like that. So speaking of unique trends, Lauren, a good friend of mine from college recently got married in Temecula and they had a really unique element. They had an adoptable dog from Samson's Sanctuary here in Southern California. So uh, they brought the dog in. They said this dog needs a home. So this question is for those who, uh, you know, are dating, of course, the pandemic, the economy that is vastly changed how people interact and are trying to find love. So what did you guys find out on how couples are meeting? How are they meeting each other and how long are they dating before marriage? Yes. So as you mentioned, this is a global wedding report. So we really took a look at 15 countries and 25,000 couples who got married in 2022. And what we found is that seven in 15 countries are still meeting in person. They're still connecting through a mutual friend or an acquaintance. Italy leads the charge there with 33%. In the US though, Canada and the UK, it is online. So three in 10 are actually finding their someone on a dating website, which I think is just great. And then in Latin America, work really leads the charge. People are meeting uh, their significant others at work 33 percent in peru specifically they lead the charge there and as you said couples are just doing it a little differently we're finding in north america and europe three quarters are actually living together before they tie the knot some are actually starting families in france we saw the largest number of couples getting together with children already in the mix so again this is another moment of just really redefining those traditions and doing what feels right to you as a couple very cool. And Lauren, it's kind of nice to know that some people are still meeting in person and not just yes. through dating apps. Of course, dating apps have revolutionized, revolutionized the way that people, you know, get out and meet. But nice to hear that. Well, thank you so yes. much, Lauren. And we will be right back with your headlines after the short break.